thinking about how things wind down for our garden. So we've got Joshua Jones, our growing, growing guru, right back here in one of our most urban community gardens. And we're going to talk about winterizing and fall cleanup for your beds. Josh, what do you do? Show us what to do. Here's a garden bed here. She's got to deal with it this fall. What does she do? All right, so um, the most important part of winterizing is cleanup. And the reason that we do the winterizing and cleanup is it prevents future disease and it lowers future pest pressure. Uh, these diseases often are soil-borne diseases, meaning the funguses live in the soil. Uh, oftentimes our pest issues, they lay their eggs in the soil. So we need to get as much of the possible uh, plant disease out of the bed as well as take away the habitat for these egg layers uh, to lay their eggs. So what I'd like to do is we need to get it back down to soil. Uh, if you joined into our last class, uh, I talked about getting rid of all the large pieces of wood or rocks and at least overturning them. And this is a prime example of what we can see in the bed. Is things like this bag of soil, if you look under it, you can see it right now. If you if we were to zoom in here, well, if you want to try to get in, but there's bugs scattering. This is a perfect haven for insects. Wherever you see insects, we can assume they're laying their eggs. And you can see all these potato bugs uh, kind of floating around. And as I pulled them out, there were much more. They've kind of scattered. So this is a prime example of what just uncovering your bed does. Just one simple act of moving this potting soil and putting it up on the shelf instead of leaving it in your garden. Um, another prime example that we see you know, this is an old knee pad thing that people, and some people might think it's it's innocuous just to leave it in the bed that's not hurting anything. But as we just saw, it's a prime haven for pests. Uh, so what we need to do is clear everything out. So, and when I say clear it all out, it, it doesn't necessarily mean just the garden bed, but the surrounding areas. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't have anything that, lay, that is laying flat protecting those eggs and those insects from laying eggs. And then after that, it's just the function of clearing everything out. I want to leave as much soil behind as possible, but I want to get all of the foliage out that I can. Insects will lay their eggs on the bottom of the foliage, and when that foliage dies, it will lay down on the ground and, again, create a perfectly sealed environment to help harbor that over the winter. Um, the eggs, oftentimes, a freeze will kill the eggs, but if there's something covering it, it might not freeze thoroughly and those eggs might survive the winter. So if you add it to your compost, it'll continue to break that stuff down so we can use it as fertilizer for the next year. All right, so we got a nice clean bed here. And what I'll, what I'll do is I'll kind of flatten it all out. That's less disturbance I'll have to do in the spring. Get it all nice and flat. Now, if this was... A little bit earlier in the year, this is a prime candidate to be cover cropped. And we don't love leaving bare soil. Uh, the reason we don't love leaving the bare soil uh, is all of the microorganisms in our soil that help feed our plants, they actually feed from sugars let go by the uh, root systems of plants. So if you pan over to the bed next to me, 
you'll see a nice healthy cover crop. Uh, that will freeze eventually and die before the winter, but this all the microorganisms in the soil are being fed right now. This bed over here will not have those plants in. It's a little too late to plant cover crop because it's probably a little too cold to get it to germinate right now. Uh, but not to worry, we have a plan for this one. I would probably leave this the way it is until I get to, I'll, I'll watch the forecast and wait until I'm just about to get to the first heart freeze. And what happens is, if we leave this for a few weeks, there might be some insects that have left pest eggs inside this soil. And what they do is they try to bury them, that way they're insulated from that cold freeze. So just before a freeze happens, I will come through very just gently just turn my soil just a little bit and what that's going to do is expose those eggs that are left in the soil and then when that freeze happens it kills those eggs i don't want to leave this bare uh, especially if you're not using wooden raised beds because bare soil gets eroded uh, bare soil it degrades uh, it's just not as healthy so at the very least we need to cover it up so we talked last class about fall is the perfect time to be collecting browns. Uh, and browns are, you, know, you can use shredded paper, you can use anything that's basically carbon based. Uh, it's got to be dry, but leaves are the, easy, the easiest and most accessible and they're for the great price of free. And I want to put those down. Now it's important to wait until that first freeze after you've turned over your beds because if you put the leaves down too early, then you've basically effectively given a very beautiful place for all those pests to lay their eggs underneath the leaves and insulate them. Uh, so again, this is after the first freeze, after I've turned over my soil, and I like to put it on nice and thick. Sometimes you find that sort of thing in leaves. Megan, pull back. Okay, we'll just do it a nice easy way. Put the whole bag on. And I like about three inches, I think, is a, a good wheelhouse here. Alright, so what that's going to do, and if it's a windy day, I recommend coming down here with a hose and watering this in. It'll mat all that down so all your leaves stay in place. What I'll do is anything that doesn't get cover cropped, that, those are the rows that get composted the next year. The rows that get cover cropped, they don't get composted the next year because I typically have a finite amount of compost and I have to use it wisely. Um, so then, what I'll do for this bed, since I'm going to compost it uh, uh, the following spring, I will make sure that this bed does not have fall crops in it next year. That way I can put cover crop in this next year and I would put leaves and, and compost the following year in this one. So I switch back and forth between what gets composted and what gets cover crop. So what I would do with these in the spring is I would just go take those to my compost pile, compost them as usual. Examples that I was talking about, things that we need to make sure that we're getting out of the garden. As you can see, this squash plant, it has uh, some beginnings of some powdery mildew and some other fungal diseases. So leaving this in for a few more weeks is probably, it might get you one more fruit, but it's almost certainly going to make sure that it passes the fungus along into the soil so the fungus comes back next year. So getting this out as quickly as possible uh, is really beneficial to the soil. And make sure you don't bring diseased plants to your compost. Uh, you can get rid of diseased plants one of two ways. Um, you can always have a burn pile if, you're, if your municipality will allow you, or a lot of municipalities will um, do a yard waste day. You see early blight has eaten up this tomato. I would not put this tomato into the compost. I get questions about these guys all the time. Uh, these are harlequin beetles. Uh, you can see, you can actually see a couple different age groups. There's the nymph, which is really small. He still has a rounded back. Uh, 
kind of looks like a ladybug, but if you've been gardening for a while, you'll be able to tell the difference. And then you can see the adult version has a much more kind of oval. It almost has the same shape as a squash bug or a stink bug. Um, so these guys are voracious eaters. As you can see, they have single-handedly taken out this um, Brussels sprout. Uh, so this is a candidate of this. This is an example of things that we need to get out of the garden as soon as possible. Uh, letting this hang out in your garden, you'll never get Brussels sprouts from it. But these guys are able to eat, make more eggs. Their eggs will hatch and make more nymphs, which make more eggs. Uh, so you're just kind of exacerbating that egg population that's down underneath the soil. So sometimes you got to forgive a little bit of produce this year for more produce next year. Uh, and I've been practicing this in my own gardening uh, for a while now, and I've certainly started seeing increased results. Uh, you should see a decline, but if you continually do these best practices that we're teaching, you will start to see over two, three, four year period, your garden all together become much, much healthier. So Josh, I got a question for you. You've just told us to remove all the vegetation from our garden beds. But right. You've also pointed out a garden bed that has a lot of cover crops in it, which is also vegetation. So what's the difference? So there's not a whole lot of difference um, outside of this cover crop is a mixture of things. So. We are not only putting in, I, I spoke earlier about how much sugars that these cover crops will put into the soil and in turn our beneficial microorganisms that live in the soil have a food source so they can continue living and enriching our soil. Um, so these are all very beneficial. You see things like, well where is it at? So these peas. So the pea has, is a nitrogen fixer, so it's adding nitrogen to our soil. Uh, I know this cover crop mixture also has daikon radishes, which daikon radishes, if you leave them over winter, they freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw and they help decompact your soil. Uh, so we're getting a lot of different benefits here. But your question uh, still is a very valid one because just like that uh, Brussels sprout plant we saw, insects can have a nice safe harbor in here. They can lay their eggs on the underside. They can crawl around on the soil and be undetected by other predators. Uh, so they will be more apt to uh, lay their eggs in a bed such as this. So we have to treat it uh, a little bit differently than we would a bare bed in the spring. First really hard freeze uh, is all going to die and lay down. Maybe in the middle of February, we typically get a nice warm day where we all want to get out in the garden anyway, uh, and, the, and the soil has kind of thawed a little bit. What I would do, do the exact same thing that I did in the other bed, is turn that soil around when it's thawed, and then the next subsequent freeze will kill all of those eggs. Uh, so just make sure you turn it at a point where the soil, it, the soil is thawed, but there's a freeze coming afterwards. So the beginning to the mid of February, I think, is a great time to go turn these fall cover crop beds over. Right now, all the leaves are dropping leaves. Uh, we need a th at least a three to one ratio uh, of browns to greens in order to keep our compost uh, as healthy. So what that means is for every one gallon bucket of food scraps that we have, we need to have at least three gallon buckets of leaves. Uh, and as you know, in the spring there are no brown leaves. In the, in the summer there are no brown leaves. So we have to make hay when the sun shines and pull up all of the leaves that we can and stockpile them into our compost pile. So if I needed to stockpile browns, I would just try to get all this sifted and moved over. And then I would also cover this with leaves. That way it's not exposed all winter because we have beautiful, healthy, fertile, uh, very microbial compost in there. And if we leave it out all winter exposed to the, the freezing, uh, we are going to kill that compost as well. Uh, and it's not that it won't do what compost does in the spring, but it won't do it as well. So I would even cover that up and protect it. And then you have a nice open bin to throw in as many browns as you can. And then you can very easily, as you need them throughout the next year, put them over here. You know, I'm the guy that's going around your neighborhood and pulling up leaves that I see people putting out to the curb. Uh, that's oftentimes I see people just giving away this beautiful resource 
Uh, so I will ask neighbors if I can if I can have their leaves and try to get those leaves any way that I can. We're going to talk about one third thing that you need to do in the fall, and that's it's time to put your tools away. And by putting them away the proper way, number one, you're going to extend the life of your tool, but the second thing is it's going to make it much more enjoyable in the spring when you grab it and go, go start to work. So we've got a shovel here. First thing we want to do is you want to get all of that wet soil off of there. All, you, can, you can imagine sitting all winter long with some moisture against a piece of steel, what might happen. And so we pay a lot of money for these tools and we want them to last as long as possible. So get all your soil off of there. And the difference between using a sharp shovel and a dull shovel is night and day. Uh, it's truly one of the joys in life just to use a sharp shovel. So at the end of the season, I like to take a file and run it right along that edge. You can see, if you can get in there really close, you can see where it's got some rust spots. You'd like to get rid of all of that. You'd like to show that shiny steel. And I like to put an angle on this side of the shovel, and I like the other side of the shovel. You can see we still got some dirt there. I like the other side of that shovel to be flat, so I'm not putting an angle on this side. Now, once we get that done all the way around there, then you want to protect that surface that you've just made. So you want to use a little bit of oil. You can use linseed oil. Uh, pretty much any kind of oil will work for you. In this particular case, I've got some vegetable oil. I took it from the kitchen. Please don't tell my wife. It doesn't take very much. Rub it into the surface. And that's going to give you a protective layer against that moisture that's going to happen during the winter time. This particular shovel has a plastic handle, but if you have a wooden handle, go ahead and rub that oil up and down that wooden handle. So that's it. This thing's ready to put away for the winter time. Ready to get back out and go to work in the spring. Thanks for joining.